Yo, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to talk about relations, domain, and range. And to begin, let's start the video off with a simple definition of what a relation is. And if you remember to previous grades, it's just basically an ordered pair of x values. Remember the x values represent the independent variable that we're working with, and y values, which is the dependent variable. So let's show two examples of certain relations. So the first example that we're dealing with is we're seeing how is the final mark on a test affected by the number of hours studied before. And then in the second relation, we're seeing how does the age of a person affect their height. Now, the first thing that you always want to check with relations is which is the in independent variable and which is the dependent variable. So in this specific relation here, obviously our final mark is dependent on the hours that we study. So the final mark is the dependent variable and the hours studied is the independent variable. And then in our second relation, the height is dependent on the age. So the height is the dependent variable and the age is the independent variable. Now there are multiple ways to show a relation. So we started off by showing these two relations in tables, but you can also show them in coordinate forms. So for example, in this case, our first student that we tested, they, uh, they studied two hours and got a final mark of 55. So the independent variable is this two and the dependent variable is this 55. Well, we can put that as a coordinate, right? The independent variable comes first of two and the dependent variable comes second of 55. And then we did that with the rest of the students. We took all of these points and then we put them in coordinate form. Same thing here, we took these points here and put them in coordinate form. Now, a third way to show these relations is through something called a mapping diagram. And a mapping diagram is very simple. You just basically list out the independent and dependent variables in these boxes, and then you just match them up. So the two with the 55, the three with the 58, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the thing to remember about mapping diagrams is that when you put your variables in these boxes, they have to be in order and you only list them out once. And that's better shown through this relation. So notice, here's our mapping diagram of this relation. Notice how this 10 here, this independent variable, appears twice. But when we put it in the mapping diagram, we only put it once, but we match it to two different dependent variables of 165 and 167.5. And then notice how in both mapping diagrams, I listed all of the variables in order from lowest value to highest value. That's what I mean by order. So for example, in, uh, in this relation, the 170 came after the 172.5 or the 162.5 came after the 165, but when I put them in the mapping diagram, I listed them in order from lowest to highest. And the fourth and final way to show a relation is through a graph. I had to erase the other three ways just to give myself some extra room, but just add this to your notes. This is the fourth way. So I took the table of values from both examples and just plotted the points. Now remember the independent variable goes on the x-axis, so the hours and the age respectively, and then the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. So the mark in example one, the final mark in percentages, and the height in example two. So in both examples, we took a relation and we showed it in four different ways. First way was a table of values, second way was a list of coordinates, the third way was a mapping diagram, and then the fourth way was a graph. 
Now before finishing off the video, I want to go over two more concepts and that's domain and range. Now domain and range is something that we're going to be getting into a lot more detail in future sections and future videos. But for now, let's just start off with the basic definitions. So the domain is the set of values of the independent variable in a relation and the range is the set of values of the dependent variable in a relation. So going back to our two examples, if we were asked to find the domain and range of each of them, it would be listed out like this. So it's actually sort of similar to the mapping diagrams. So what you do is you list out all the points from lowest to highest in order, and you don't repeat any variables that appear twice. So for example, this 10 here, notice how this x value of 10 repeats twice. There are two coordinates that have an x value of 10, but when we write the domain, it only appears once. So again, when you're writing the domain and range out, it's always from lowest to highest, and you always write out the values just once. Now, in the next video, I'm going to go over a concept called a function, and that's what this course is called, functions. It's a very important concept. You'll be getting tested on it for sure. And the way I'm going to explain it is I'm going to use the same example. So it's going to be a continuation of this video.